Good evening. My name is Matt Lawless, and I'm the Scottsdale Town Administrator. You're now viewing the Scottsdale Planning Commission meeting for Monday, May the 3rd, 2021. This meeting is being held pursuant to and in compliance with the uh, Scottsdale Ordinance on the Continuity of Government during the COVID-19 disaster. This meeting is held in hybrid format, both here at the town office and um, online with um, streaming access and telephone access. We also archive and share the meetings on the town's YouTube channel after the fact. The public officials who are electronically present at this meeting are um, Chair Joshua Peck, um, Commission members Lindsey Brown, Lisa Cofagnano, Sherry Lambert, and Shannon Strassman. Town staff members are also present for this meeting. The public has several opportunities to observe and participate in the meeting. Those are listed on the entrance to the town office and on the town website. Participation will include the opportunity to comment on relevant matters, and the meeting agenda does include a public hearing on a special use permit. Thank you for your interest and participation in Scottsville local government. The local time here now is 14 minutes until 7 o'clock, which is the closest start of the meeting. So I'll um, mute this line and finish setting up here. If you're watching in the future on YouTube, go ahead and skip ahead 14 minutes on your recording and you'll see the uh, meeting come to order. Thank you.
Hi, Sherry. How are you? Oh. <laughs> You're, Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you? Really good. Yeah. Oh, good. I uh, saw you guys got the garage repainted. I haven't been out much, so that might have been done for months, but I was just... <laughs> actually just finished it probably two weeks ago, a week ago, maybe we finished all of it. It looks fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. we're very pleased. Oh, good, good. Yeah, it's fun. All right, excellent. Thank you, Matt, for sending that out. See if that scoops anybody else up. Matt, have you got Shannon there with you? No, nobody here. We're a couple short of four now. Hello. Okay. Hello. Ah, speak of the devil. How's it going? All right. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for coming again. Yeah. So I am vaccinated fully. Okay. And if you are too, and you're okay with. Let's do the thing. Let's do it. <laughs> Are you guys expecting Josh there in town hall as well? He told me he was having some troubles at home. Um, he usually likes to come down in person. So if he can get things taken care of, we'll see him. But uh, maybe not. Okay. We might be relying on Lindsay to run the meeting here. Yes. Do we have a vice vice chair just in case? <laughs> Taylor, how are you? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? Good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you. It's a nice day here. Yes. Taylor, are you down here or? Um... I'm in DC at the moment. Okay, excellent. How are things up there? Fine, I guess. I mean, yeah. coming down this weekend for Mother's Day, of course. So of course, excellent. See how I make sure mom's happy and keep mom happy. <laughs> Let's see, have the cherry blossoms come and gone already? They probably yes. have. Yes, yeah. that was a few weeks back. I was going to say, if my peaches and apples in the side yard have probably gone, I imagine that the cherries yeah. are well past by now. Yeah. I mean, it was still pretty much shut down. They didn't really let tourists out too much. I mean, with the code restrictions, they mm -hmm. block off a lot of the metro line. So I mean, you can't prevent people from doing it, but they make it hard for you to get there. What, what are the metro restrictions like these days? Just wear a mask. I mean, they'll really? let you go, but they'll block off stations like during the festival so that you have to walk a couple miles to get down to the tidal basin if you really want to go. Are they actually enforcing any kind of like car occupancy or? Not that I've seen. Wow. Um, I mean, I have a car up here and it's me and my girlfriend who will drive down when we do. So it's just the two of us. Mm -hmm. um, but I've not. I've I'm not sorry. I meant like people on the metro car yeah. on the train. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah just put that together um <laughs> not that i've seen i haven't ridden it that much um i mean my work isn't super far away so i can normally bike there if i if i go in but i'm still kind of remote half time so um, it's been pretty sparse uh, the, the bus and, and metro lines were such an integral part of my experience to living in dc it's yes. been something i've been sort of trying to imagine what it would be like getting through all of this right now with that. It's a little different. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Shannon, you lived in DC for a long time, right? I lived in Northern Virginia, grew up there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So not quite as fun as DC. But. <laughs> that was an interesting shift in my time there between even just living in uh, like the Columbia Pike part of Arlington to then actually moving across the river into the city. Right. Uh, was a significant change and a lot of fun. <laughs> yep. We partied a lot in DC. <laughs> that was cool. yeah. <laughs> Not much of that going on these days. Yeah. I went to a um, like a block party festival in Petler two weekends ago. Oh wow! It's my first DC trip in a while. That's but they awesome. They did a, a wonderful street party with, with lots of different like, sidewalk and, and porch neat. concerts. Yeah. It, it, it looks so great. That's um, cool. It's so difficult to see things yeah. warm in springtime and lots of people out. Right. That's really cool. Classic. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get up there very much anymore. No, that was a 
Yeah. We took Bright up to the um, Natural History Museum a couple years ago. Yeah. He loved that. Oh, that's the one we're waiting on. We got Charlie to the zoo around his birthday in November, apparently in like a fairly narrow window before they had to close it again. Right. And uh, he and Hattie both loved that. But I um, yeah, we've been counting down until we can get to see the T-Rex skeleton and everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was fun. Apparently, they just installed a replica somewhere in Richmond. It's one of only like 100 full-size T-Rex skeleton replicas. Um, and some learning nonprofit with a big headquarters in Richmond uh, okay. decided to put it in their lobby. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Lobby this big. Right. I want a T Rex replica in my. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ron. <laughs> we are having a little bit of a quorum delay here, just waiting on somebody else to join us. No, I, I didn't hear anything from Lindsay or Lisa. Well, this Monday snuck up us on us, Matt. Um, let's try maybe sending a text out seeing if anybody else forgot. Does anybody know when they're going to break ground at the car wash? I don't know. Um, we'll, um, we'll get a site plan okay. um, before they do it. And that'll be on August when they do it. Okay. So it'll be, we'll be the first one out. Okay. Um, but I haven't seen anything from the building yet. Okay. Matt, cool. I don't have a good number for Lindsay or Lisa. If you okay. do, would you go ahead and maybe send them a quick text? Yeah. Um, Shannon, they put out a text release, uh, a press release recently um, oh. that just said they were expecting about 18 months or so before oh. they were operational down here. I was hoping it would be a little sooner. Mm -hmm. My car yeah. is fast. Well, hard to say. Maybe they're expecting, you know, maybe that's the Charlottesville Albemarle schedule and, uh, and we can impress. <laughs> So I guess they're going to tear that house down, I'm assuming. Yeah. That would probably be for whatever comes later. Their um, car wash gas station site plan, I don't think touched that oh, okay. part of the property. Cool. You mean the, you mean the phone service and stuff, which you can see from that? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, that's correct. OK. That's a bummer, right? That's a cute house. It is. I can, I can almost imagine it being Got it inside. Yeah. And it into a store. Right. You really wanted to keep it as a shop. Yeah, that's a good idea. A year or so before COVID started, Matt and I did a little uh, tour of locations in town for a guy I knew who ran a daycare. Uh, you know, half a dozen or so different daycare centers over in the Fredericksburg area, yeah. and that was the location that he really honed in on as. Right. Uh, right off the main, you know, drag there and easy to do pick up and drop off and a very nice yeah. site with lots of space around it. You liked that one, but you never got anything going there. Yeah, that's a bummer. We need something like that in town. Mm -hmm. That'd be really nice. A lot of people would say that about a car wash too, though. Oh, I agree. <laughs> we need both. Either 2892 or you one of our planning commission members? You can unmute if you need to. Hey, Matt. <clears throat> Matt. Yes, sir. I just got a text back from Lindsay saying that uh, she's not available today. Uh, she okay. had she had let you know she says yes that's right that's right haven't got anything back from lisa yet
School, school, and school. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, I think his paper is due this Sunday night. So, he's, uh, yeah, we're both looking forward to it. <laughs> Um, my mom did did she work when she was in high school? Oh my gosh. And that was the like, okay, you're on your own. This is when you learn how to do all of these things. Right, right. It's like I'm gonna be up good. in my writing room. Right. I still distinctly remember the early portions of my childhood when my parents were still in grad school and were yeah. <laughs> living in student housing. I don't think I could do it. I'm so tired at the end of every night. I I so glad I got that out of the way before kids. I don't know how Luke's doing it. It's a, it's a life cycle to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not envying him. But if you like what you do, it's exciting, I guess. Yeah. He, he enjoys the reading and the writing. I think so. I, I think he's finding some of it to be a bit um, not super applicable to what he's doing. So, that's a, that's a good yeah. Lisa just needs a couple of minutes. She'll be right in there. Oh, excellent. Thank you. I'm excited about that floral shop opening up. I know we have to um our late night dog walks. We ran mm -hmm. into them the other night. Yeah, they've been there. And you've got the best people because they've been doing all that setup work. Right. Yeah, we walked by and she saw us snooping and she came out to say hi. It's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, one brief thing for consideration here as we wait for Lisa to join us, we will need somebody to volunteer to be our de facto chair for the evening and run us through the agenda since we'll be missing both Josh and Lindsay. That's great. I think we should make Lisa do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Lisa. We were just saying uh, we need one of the three of you, now that we have a quorum, to volunteer to be our de facto mm. chair for the evening since we are missing both Josh and Lindsay. Someone will need to walk us through this agenda. No, oh, we've got you on mute there, Lisa. Sorry. I mean, I can do it if you guys tell me how to do it. Sure, why don't we do that? We've got Matt right there in the room with you. That might that might work best. Or Sherry. <laughs> yeah, you're at um you're at minimum quorum. Um so the, we get to do the whole Robert's rules. The um anyone in the group can nominate anyone else to act as chair and preside over the meeting. Okay. I hear somebody comment. Maybe it's Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Might we be saved from this procedural? <laughs> hello, hello. How are you doing? Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thanks for coming on down. Yeah. Okay. Would somebody like to make a nomination for chair for the evening then? I'd like to nominate uh, Shannon Strathner for the chair position for this evening. I'll second that. Thank you. I appreciate you all that. Sure. All right. So I just need to call the meeting to order. Yes, go right ahead. You can call the meeting to order here. I'll mark the time. OK. I'm calling the meeting to order on Monday, May 3rd. Do I have to use the gavel? Oh, okay. I'm going to definitely take advantage of this. Meeting is called to order. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to review and approve the meeting minutes from April 5th, 2021. I'd like to make a motion that the meeting minutes from uh, April 
3rd would be, or April 5th, excuse me, would be accepted as the minute. Can I second up the chair? Mm -hmm. oh, I'll second that. Um, and then we can vote Okay, can I have a voice vote to um, approve the minutes from April 5th? Aye. 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 And hearing none opposed, it carries. Okay, mm -hmm. hearing none opposed, it carries. We can share a little bit of update from the town council meeting. Um, yeah. our, our council liaison, Lindsey Brown, is traveling for work and absent today. Um, Man, I've got my notes here. Do you want me to? Uh, sure. You've got, yeah, you've got this open. Go ahead. Um, so let's see. Uh, town council took a few votes at their last meeting. Uh, they held a public hearing on the special use permit for uh, residential use at uh, what was the address there on Valley Street? Mr. Uh -oh. Gadian's property, 501. Uh -oh. Thank you. Um, uh, they reviewed that and approved it. Um, they held a public hearing to vacate a right of way on Clement Street. That was a piece of business that did not pass through the planning commission, but is a slight change to boundaries in town. Uh, that was passed. Um, uh, we moved forward with some work on the DMV. Uh, most notably for your work, uh, they called the public hearing on the changes to the village residential uh, text definition and intent. Uh, sections that you approved at your last meeting. Um, and they passed a resolution uh, asking you to look at uh, zoning map amendments for village residential in this meeting. Um, so that is later on in the agenda in new business here. Um, and Matt, if you have anything else you'd like to add to that, feel free. That sounds good to me. Um, Mayor Smith, thank you for joining us. Would you like to share anything else, sir? I don't have anything special tonight. I just uh, wanted to check in and see what was going on with the planning commission. Keep up to speed with you know, everything y'all are doing. Appreciate all that you're doing. Right. Now we have um, matters of the public. Um, we've got a public hearing on our agenda that will open up um, at item five A. But if there's um, if there's anyone else from the public here who has anything to share for the good of the body that is not the public hearing about 137 Main Street, um, they can feel free to share that. Okay. Now, would you like to open the public hearing? Okay. Um, I'm Hereby open the public hearing, um, which is a special use permit application for the apartments at 137 East Main Street. Would anyone from the public like to speak on this matter? All right, the uh, public hearing for the special use permit for 137 East Main Street is closed. Um, and now we'll move on to old business, which is the special use permit application for the apartments at 137 East Main Street. Do need to do anything with that? Um, An opportunity for conversation if you'd like to have any before uh, making a motion be in order. And you do have the applicant here if you have any questions. Uh, as um, as you um, as you recall from last month's meeting, this is a special use permit um, regarding the um, historic building at 137 East Main. Um, historically, the um, Masonic Lodge um, has always been the um, the use upstairs there. And, and many different commercial uses have passed through it over time on the ground floor. Um, the building is under new ownership um, 
Mr. Taylor Schmidt, who's here with us, is the new owner and the applicant. And he proposes to renovate the upstairs, the old meeting hall, into three one bedroom apartments. Um, there's no change to the ground floor retail use. Um, we expect and hope Structural Supply Company to continue operating there for many years. Uh, the zoning on the site is commercial um, and it is surrounded by town owned lots at the creek, the police station, and the small parking lot um, to the south of it. The building lot is very small. Uh, the, um, the zoning in um, most of the historic commercial around Valley Street allows these kinds of upstairs apartments um, by right when they have a history of mixed use. This building is a little unusual because it has always had the meeting hall. There's no history of residential use there in the past. Many of the buildings on the street have changed between various boarding houses and apartments and warehouses over the course of the years. Um, and so they get to move back and forth between the users. That's not the case here. So the apartment conversion requires a special use permit. Um, this seems to line up well with the town comprehensive plan. Um, there are goals related to um, a vibrant mix of uses uh, in this historic downtown. And the town has goals to promote a walkable mix of businesses, um, housing, and recreation uses in the historic district. So, so that looks like it makes sense. Um, the only um, potential nuisance concern or impact to be aware of is making sure we have adequate parking. Um, there is ample public parking around the building, both on street and in the surface lot. Um, but um, we have a history of concerns of um, how best to manage that parking when there are these commercial uses and apartments um, that need to sort out which are the best parking spaces to use for different ones. So uh, an example of a condition applied to a similar special use permit is um, just north of us here at the, um, the old Dollar General and Apartments building. When the apartment conversion was made there, the town applied a condition to the permit to require the apartment residents to use the public parking to put that condition in the leases so that the limited amount of on-street parking would be available for the business. The, um, uh, the applicant, Mr. Schmidt, did not, um, did not um, request or offer any special conditions along those lines, um, but it might be useful to consider here this evening um, whether a condition related to required resident parking in the public lot would be helpful um, and deserve the on-street parking on Main Street for the business. Um, so that's that's the only thing that staff might offer as a possible condition for the okay. and, and I also thought it was an option to offer, offer two hour parking on the street. Yes. To make that a Yep, and that, that doesn't require any condition on the permit. That's something right. that the town can just do um, is buy the sign and put them on the street. Okay. Um, that doesn't um, doesn't cost the applicant anything and doesn't um, encumber the property in the future. So, um, Mr. Schmidt, how much parking is there in, oh wait, is that lot in the back town owned or is that lot in the back his? It's town owned. Town owned. Um, like more, so Matt or, or well, anyone, town. how much parking is there back there? Eight spaces. Eight spaces. And um, similarly, the uh, special use permit that Matt was referring to, uh, the condition that was placed on that was that overnight parking be in the closest available town lot. So will the signage be put up in addition that says that the residents um, have the use of that parking lot from say 5 to 8 a.m., 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. daily? Or how, how will that be um, posted so that just people will park there and take those spaces? That's a good question. Uh, that's something I think that we would we would want to figure out. The lot on Valley Street um, 
has a significant amount of space and we've never put up those signs on the assumption that there would always be available spaces for those tenants. Um, uh, I don't know how, how popular the lot behind the bridge is there, but I think, um, yeah, signage like you're describing might not be out of order. Yeah, the, the public lots don't have any preference fitted for them. They're free for overnight use or during the day. Mr. Smith, in your in your um, plan to lease the property when you do lease um, mm -hmm. to your residents, um, do you, are you promising any parking or that's not anything that's going to be included in there? Okay. I mean, there are spaces, but I mean, I think it, it, my understanding is it is a public lot. And so it wouldn't be reserved for them. If a lot was filled, they would have to find another public lot over by the farmer's market or wherever they could go. Um, right. I mean, to me, the two hour parking sounds good to me because that, I mean, I can put it in the lease. That's easy enough. Um, but two hours on main street also takes care of the issue as well. Um, but that I'm sure then has to get approved and you guys have put signage up and there'd have to be hearing. Um, I would but just I can just in yeah. your lease itself, if you have anything that you're going to state about parking for your tenants. Oh, I mean, I certainly can. Uh, it's easy enough for me to put in. Uh, I can just say resident parking um, on the uh, after business hours in the back lot or I mean, whatever the standards. Yes. And that's kind of what I was thinking um if that works best for the town i'm happy to do it so, Nick, you, you have no objection to that kind of nope. position, which matches some of the other no i mean again it works the other buildings and it works for this one i think that seems fair okay. so. thomas do you happen to have the wording of that condition from our past example on hand oh that is a good question i don't have that on this computer i believe that's sitting on my desktop i can office there exactly with it. um keeping that consistent seems yeah beneficial doesn't it i think i've got it actually hang on one second okay. Email history can do many things. Um, uh, the two conditions on the local oak property were uh, limited to three units and tenant leases must require parking off of Valley Street is the way it was phrased. So yeah, I mean, wording like that sounds good if you just change it to East Main or Main Street, I mean, that's or Valley and Main Street. Um, then it's in one of the public lots around back. That seems seems reasonable to me. Well, then if there's no further discussion, then a motion on the special use permit with or without that condition as described would be in order. So we're we're in agreement that we'll just ask for the condition in the lease um, versus um, asking for the two-hour parking signs. Is that what I'm hearing? I feel like the two-hour parking sign should be something that should, if we're going to do that, that should be considered more more thoroughly. I don't know that it should pertain to just this projects. Okay. We did a bit of a review of that a couple of years ago on Valley Street. Um, I think as we see more uh, development happening on Main Street there, it'd be worth taking a look at making sure that we provide the same sort of um, accommodations there as well. Do we have a motion? 
What was the address? 1136 West Main? 137 yeah. East Main. 137 East Main. Okay, I make a motion that we approve the special use permit for um, residential housing in the upstairs of the 137 East Main Street property with the condition that the landlord put terms in the lease about using off street parking and town parking when available. I second that. We'll call a roll vote in just a moment, getting the wording here. Um, Ms. Caltabiano? Aye. Uh, Ms. Lambert? Aye. Ms. Strassner? Aye. Thank you all very much. The motion carries. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. I appreciate, appreciate you yeah. coming to all the meetings. <laughs> Happy to be here. Thanks. I well, look forward to seeing the work going on. If we can do anything it's, to be helpful along the way there, uh, please feel free to reach out and let us know. I will. I think for now we're good. And maybe another meeting with the ARB architect might be with me on that one, depending on what he comes up with. But we'll see on that one. That's hopefully nothing. Good luck, sir. Wonderful. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So moving on to new business. Um, looks like we have zoning map amendments for review as requested by town council. Yeah. Um, I, I know um, Lindsey Brown would, would introduce this matter if she were not traveling for work, but I can share some of the update of what town council did at their last meeting. Probably the easiest thing is to um, screen share this um, real quick and, and walk through the items and I'll um I'll describe these for the record as well um, for anyone who's not getting videos needed. Um, at the town council meeting last month, um, council member Stuart Munson introduced and town council approved this resolution by the town council to amend the zoning map. Um, the zoning ordinance consists of two parts the text of the ordinance that sets um, rules for how property can be used in different parts of the town, and then a zoning map that applies those rules by zone to different parcels. That's what makes a zoning ordinance. Um, the map can be amended in two ways. Either a property owner can pay a fee and apply um, if they would like to use the property in a different way and have it rezoned, um, or the town council can um, request a zoning a map amendment uh, to advance their strategic plans. Um, and so that's what Town Council is doing in this case. There are um, several parcels that, where they see um, inaccuracies that need to be updated or where they see opportunities to advance the town's comprehensive plan by proactively updating the map. Um, so they sent several requests for the planning commission to consider and make a recommendation about whether the map should be updated. So this resolution has six bullet points on it that identify different lots. Um, so if I I'll switch over to the to the map and walk through what these um, what these six locations are. Um, probably this um, visual map is the simplest way to walk through these. Um, most of these are changing from residential zoning to um, public zoning. Uh, they're properties that the town or another public entity owns, but the zoning doesn't properly reflect that um, with public zoning the way that it should. Um, also map that. Um, so one of the one of the downtown examples is the Bruce Park lot here. Um, this is only about one uh, eighth of an acre uh, donated to the town um, by the Bruce family, and the town built Bruce Park 
This happened about 15 years ago, but the rezoning never occurred. This property is still zoned downtown residential. Um, it would make it more consistent and help to protect its permanent use as a park if it was zoned public. The same phenomena exists uh, for two lots off of Confederate Street. Uh, here. The town uh, bought these two lots, this one here. There we go. Um, that one and this one. Um, so one of the larger of the two lots extends Van Cleef Nature Area up to the little cul-de-sac on Confederate Street. And the other is a, a long skinny lot that provides a potential um, walking path from Jefferson Street up to Confederate Street. The town purchased both of those lots in 2018, but they remain zoned for residential and were not rezoned as public. If the town's intent is to permanently protect those as parks and public space, perhaps they should be rezoned for public. Um, the next one is uptown over at the fire station. Um, oops, there we go. Um, the fire department has long-term plans to expand their building. Um, and so they acquired the lot next door to the fire station. It has an empty house on it now. But if the fire station were ever to expand with another larger building or with additional parking space and further use for the fire department, they would need this lot. This is owned by the um, fire department and they're planning the expanding facilities now. Um, but this lot is also still zoned residential, would need to be used on public for that fire department use to happen. Um, the next one to go public is part of the factory parcel here. Um, and for context, um, the town applied for and received from the Virginia Outdoors Foundation a grant of $80,000 to purchase a public access easement on 14.2 acres of floodplain and wetland habitat with uh, plans for improvement of low impact public amenities such as walking trails. The Outdoors Foundation um, made this total of $1.9 million in grants and Scottsdale was the fortunate recipient of $80,000 of those grants. The defined wetland area is shown um, here in red. Um, this is a map of most of the wetland area um, below the factory building itself. Um, again, the acreage is about 14.2, and it includes a little wedge of land in the, um, in the space above the parking lot connecting the fork in the road at Bird Street and the driveway near the levee walk down to this parking lot. Um, the project agreement includes uh, shared public use of this parking lot and driveway, and then also um, conserves all of the wetland uh, floodplain property. Um, this is the area where the um, fireworks display happens the 4th of July. And then the largest portion is this belt of um, forested wetland below the factory building. And it connects down to the very corner of the time limit um, not crossing the tracks into the bottom line, so it's not quite river access, but it um, it opens the interesting idea of trails through this wetland and um, future access with this little crossing here over to the river. All of this property is zoned um, industrial at present, and the grant agreement with the Outdoors Foundation requires that the land be zoned appropriately for public use in order for the deal to close. Um, so those um, six items. Uh, together include about 17 acres that are currently residential and industrial um, that are requested for public use. Um, the last action item is the um, industrial parcel here um, above the factory. This is about 20 acres currently zoned industrial requested for rezoning to village residential. Planning Commission previously approved and Town Council is now considering um, testing on village residential um, that would provide some additional um, cluster bonus 
uh, details um, for better site planning and housing development in this area. The West Downtown Small Area Plan and the Town Comprehensive Plan call for that kind of um, gradual mixed use development um, extending from downtown into this area. Um, the Comprehensive Plan is all of them fall for this reason, uh, and Town Council feels this is a good time to take that action. Uh, so taken together, you've got you've got 19 acres rezoning from industrial to residential, and about 17 acres from residential and industrial to public, um, correcting some errors in the zoning ordinance and advancing the plans. Um, if I remember correctly, I, I just have a question about the um, the last parcel of land, converting it to village residential. Sure. Um, were we kind of thinking that that might be leverage that we would have if we kept the zoning the way it currently is, um, as far as getting the current owner of the property to, um, remediate the factory area? Um, it could be, but certainly we want to approach to, um, if you, um, if you wanted to wait for, um, the owner to apply. That the map can be amended in those two ways. Um, either the um, either the town applies to be proactive, or the owner applies when they have something specific that they want to do. Okay. Okay. I was just wondering, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure what the best approach to that would be. Um, I just thought I had remembered when we were talking about that area. Yep. That was one of the thoughts. Mm -hmm. Is there currently any interest in that? Um, yes. Okay. So if we rezoned it, would that make it more appealing at this point? Yes. Um, okay. Having having the zoning in place certainly signals that the town is trying to help. Okay. Um, the industrial zoning suggests that we want to see industrial use there, and I think council's thought on the resolution. Um, was to support the thing that we say we want in our plans. Okay. One of the ways that we can pave the way for the change that we want to see is to get the zoning right okay. in the first place. Great. So I'm sorry, um, since I didn't hear 100% of what you guys said, just to be clear that upper bird LLC, that land is privately owned. They're not asking us to make this change, but we're thinking that it's a good idea to make the change to make it more desirable. Is that what I'm understanding? That's, That's correct. correct. The, the, the request for action in this case comes from town council. Um, the owner does not object, um, but it's the council that's initiating this rather than the owner. I think that it really shows proactivity if we do initiate this as village residential, because um, as was shared with us the last committee meeting or the commission meeting from the uh, vice chair in Charlottesville, he really tried to encourage us to be forward thinking in what we did want to have happen in some of the areas of our town. And if we wanted it to make it uh, readily available by right and changing this to village residential would um, signal to people that that's what we're looking for to be in that area and kind of like come here come here let's let's make it happen kind of thing so I think it's it's a proactive move and a good one I guess I have a hesitation because um we have a lot of land that's already village residential that's not being developed. And it's, I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's much of an appetite for any industrial. Um, I'm sure there isn't much of an appetite for any more industrial in the area, but um, 
I don't know. I, I, I almost, it seems a little strange to change zoning of someone's privately held land without them making the initiative to, you know, to request that change. And, and do we have enough or do we want more opportunity for land development? Regarding the rest of it, um, the rest of the plots that you described, that all makes sense. Um, it, it seems like it's just a formality to make the change on the map, but, um, and I mean, the intention was made clear a long time ago in those other cases, converting from, in, from um, industrial to wetlands and, and recreation, and then converting from uh, residential to public, that, those intentions were made clear and, and solidified. So it's kind of a formality what you're asking us to do now. So I'm okay with that, but I, I'm kind of stuck on the upper bird. Does anyone else have any opinions on it? I think I, you know, I would be for making the amendment. I don't want to see industrial back there anymore. So, um, I live right down there, so that's kind of selfish on my part, but um, I, I think a lot of the residents came out when we were discussing the, the downtown area plan and voiced the, the opinion that they also didn't want to see industrial back in that space. Um, I do question what, you know, I'm just, and this is just more curiosity on my part, but you know, if, if the owner of that property is looking to sell to developers what will happen with the tire factory and how will that all play out um so i don't know if anybody has any more insight into that or what what might happen with that or, or what that space and area might become you're, you're right we, we identified in our neighborhood planning process that the, the factory is the harder of the two right it's um it's easier to build on open land than it is for renovated big buildings, um, probably. Right? So, right. Some businesses are able to go into a wide open warehouse and do something with it. Right. Um, but a big factory right. renovation is a harder project. Right, and especially with who going. knows what's going on with the, you know, any you know, hazardous waste and all of that kind of stuff. But, so it sort of it sort of feels like, you know, do you wanna do you wanna take it piece by piece? And figure out the things that you know you can figure out, right. like a wetland park, greenfield housing, and innovation. Or do you want to see the whole 60 acres planned all at once, um, which is comforting? It provides all the answers at the same time. Right. But um, not every investor is able to take on right. that. Yeah. Um, would you rather phase it, or would you rather wait and then have everything? I think I'm I'm up for phasing it and voting for village residential. I'll just add to it. The the only action we need for this evening would be um, calling a public hearing on this. Uh, and, and as we uh, Ron can attest, as we've been telling town council over and over, all you have to do is advertise the maximum, and you can always dial it back at the public hearing. Uh, so if you guys uh, are on the fence about anything, that would be all I would uh, say is that um, you can always dial it back next month at the public hearing if you uh, hear input from the public or, or come to any of your own conclusions in the intervening time. Yeah, so it, especially without the full membership here, um, it's, a, it's a baby step to call the public hearing for next month and see what we learn okay. in that time. So do we make a motion to have this move to a public hearing, uh, these items as written or? Yes, if you, if you vote. Yes, I will go ahead and make that motion to approve and to uh, schedule a public hearing on the six items as discussed. Second. Second. And Shannon, you can just uh, call all in favor on that one. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 
All right, thank you very much. And that will be, what is our next meeting? June 7th. June 7th, thank you. Okay, wonderful. June 7th, 7 p.m. All right, uh, moving on, uh, looks like there's an upcoming vacancy on the commission. Is that my position? No. Oh, okay. It's Mr. Pex. Okay. Oh. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very sorry to announce, well, congratulating him on his on his new job and um, happy changes in his family life. Um, Mr. Peck can take a step back from, uh, from this commission and sure. uh, has given us uh, notice of his impending resignation. Um, Mr. Peck served a, um, an adventurous firm on town council, I think starting at the age of 19. Wow. Um, served four years there and a couple of years on a planning commission um, and, and certainly brought the, uh, the valuable perspective of somebody who uh, grew up here and then uh, rented and, and worked different jobs while living in town. Um, so uh, we're missing, but uh, we've got to recruit for a vacancy um, coming up here soon. Okay. The, um, the planning commission service um, requires residency in town, um, but it's interesting that it doesn't require owning property. Mr. Peck was our um, renter member. So if there's, um, if there's someone in town that you think has a, um, a good head for the kinds of business that we've been taking on this evening, um, it, uh, um, they're welcome to um, apply. Uh, with something as simple as a, a statement of their interests and a professional resume, if that happens. Okay. And then at the next meeting, this body can, um, can run interviews and make a recommendation to council. It's a great way to get involved in public service, as you can. And when would that start? Uh, town council could make the appointment as soon as their June meeting. So. Um, it would be um, July the fifth would be the um, the first meeting of the body of the new member. And um, when you say in town, does that that doesn't include like the greater Scottsdale area? Is it like the downtown area? How does that work? It has to be town limits, but not necessarily the historic district downtown. Okay. So anywhere up to the bb and and across James River Road and down Old Poplar Springs and yep. the full town limits qualify. Yep. Um, Lindsey Brown lives right on the edge of town on Pat Dennis Road, out that way. If you're, if you're interested and not sure whether you live in town, by all means ask us. <laughs> it's a wonderful time to call your town staff. <laughs> But we will try to get the word out and um, hopefully um, we can meet a few interested folks next month. All right, sounds great. Okay, is that everything? That's all we have, unless anybody else wants to add anything. Any other comments for the group? All right. I call the meeting to a close. Any one second? How does this work? <laughs> Any member make a motion to adjourn. Ah, I motion to adjourn. Okay. I'll second that. All right. Motion adjourned. Adjourned at seven fifty-three. Really noted. Thank you all very much. <laughs> <laughs> How did you enjoy that, Shannon? Oh, you know what? It was the power is going to my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to go home to two young boys, so don't uh, don't let your you can take the gavel if you want. <laughs> now I have to go to the PTA meeting, which is at the brewery tonight. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you all very much. I got roped into that. Oh boy, you needed another thing on your calendar. No, I was kind of voluntold. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Wonderful to see you. All right. Thank you all. Sorry I was late. Oh, no problem. Thank you for coming. We needed you. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs>